All right, so hello, welcome back. So we're taking today a look at World War II every day with the army sizes. And we're going to test my knowledge of military history during World War II, which I should be pretty good at. Um, thank you to my patrons. Thank you for watching this video. The original video is in the description. And I probably turned this one into over a 50 minute video. So please go watch that one if you want something smaller. Um, otherwise, uh, Let's get into this. Um, yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> we're going real fast already. Germany declares war on Poland September 1st, 1939. Poland, at this point, was half-ish mobilized. Britain and France ordered a cease. They really told them to not really mobilize. Because, uh, no, put it this way. Poland could have been better prepared for the German onslaught. But they were told not to be. This morning, the British ambassador in Berlin handed the German government. Oh my God! Okay, okay. All right. So, yes, the Soviets declare war, and it's the twenty second of September, nineteen thirty nine. I was gonna have to read this guys to you. So, the Polish, when they when Soviets declare war on the the Poles, Britain and France do not have an obligation to defend the Poles. They have a strict treaty with Poland that says, hey, if you're attacked by Germany, we'll come to your assistance. It had nothing with the Soviets. That's why they didn't declare war on the Soviets. Now, the Romanian bridgehead, which is basically these 181,000, at least a few, a good majority, 50,000, 60,000 guys are actually able to get to Romania. But a lot of them are cut off here. The Romanian bridgehead. Basically, what it was was any troops uh, that Poland could get, because Romania at this time was still quote-unquote democratic. At this point, they weren't fascist. Um, and they let the Polish troops evacuate into their borders, which a lot of them will go whoop, over here to France to reform their army and fight in the Battle of France. A final note, stating that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock. And that's it. Not even a, basically a month. And that's it. Um, and now Stalin begins demanding Finnish territory. Oh boy, here we go. Winter war. That they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland. A state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now. Okay, we are going fast. Okay, boys. No, oh, man, we're just we're just going so fast. Okay, I'm just gonna skip the part where the partition, because you all people know that Hitler bombs blast. Hitler escapes a bomb blast in the Munich beer hall. Okay, this was a plot, and it came very close to killing Hitler, like like that close. Uh, the explosives just didn't go off in time. They didn't rig it um, to explode at that certain point. Um, they rigged it to explode, but it was too late. And or <laughs> He didn't show up on time. That was it. They rigged the explosives to speak at the exact time he was speaking, but he was late, and that saved his life. Otherwise, he would have died here. Very assuredly would have died in uh, November 1939. That no such undertaking had been received. And that consequently, this country... All right, so the Soviet Union attacks. It looks like December 1st, 1939, and becomes known as the Winter War. It's going to go very badly for the Soviets. Why? They decide to attack on an entire front because they think numbers win battles. Um, the Finns the Finns have the Mannerheim line that's up here uh, near Karelia because uh, that's basically what the Soviets are demanding is this whole territory up here to Karelia, the Karelia Isthmus. Um and they're able to hold out and inflict a lot of casualties on the Soviets. They do not win. It is a misconception that the Finns win. But they give the Soviets a pyrrhic victory. It's like they won, but they lost a lot of things. Really, what they should have done was drove their actual army up the side. Because this is where the majority of the Finnish population is actually on the coastline. And Helsinki is right here. Uh, if they drove their armored divisions, what they did have in armored brigades, they well, actually probably would have won. But they didn't. They spread out their entire line. Um, and it just led to massacres. Um, but yeah, if you're a Hoi 4 player and you you fight Finland in the Winter War, you know that that thing ends in about six seconds because you just do that and you win. He's at war with Germany. USSR is expelled from the League of Nations in response to the Soviet invasion of Finland for whatever that was worth at that point. The League of Nations already failed, it didn't matter. <laughs> Okay. 
A German plane carrying plans for Fall Globe crashes in neutral Belgium. Okay. Fall Globe, basically the original plane was to sweep down and, you know, um, take over basically the low countries. Okay. Um, and like a World War One assault. That is why when the plane crashes with the plans, they have to do a diversionary or they have to come up with something on the fly, which leads to the Ardennes assault. Okay. Uh, the capture documents reveal Hitler's plan to invade Scandinavia and a postponed invasion of France until the spring. Okay, yeah, so the Soviets finally break through the Mannerheim line. All right, oh my god, maybe I should slow this video down. Manstein proposes presents hit to Hitler plans to invade France by the Ardennes Forest. This is in response to the fall globe plans being you know, lost, which Manstein will get the approval of Hitler basically to launch his attack um, through the Ardennes and override the chief of staff at the point the, the German chief of staff was in. He wanted to do the you know, regular assault. Finns tell the Soviets they will agree to it, to their terms for ending the war, which is giving up all this stuff. Basically, the, a lot of their uh, outer territory in the Karelianski. But they gave the Soviets a hell of a body nose for what they did. <laughs> Britain and France make a formal agreement that neither country will seek a separate peace with Germany, and we'll see about how far that lasts with France. Undisputed question about Romanian territory. This is one of the key facts that actually gets Romania to join and side with the Axis. Now we're having the Denmark and Norway invasion, okay? Britain and France very simply fucked this up. Uh, they could have had an ability to get troops into Norway and Narvik. Um, they really could have stopped the invasion of Norway. Denmark was dead. Denmark died. It, it was nothing they could do, unfortunately. Yeah, British and French troops land in, in Norway, and it's way too late by this point. Now, now, okay, Germany invades France in the Benelux. Winston Churchill becomes prime minister after a vote of no confidence is levied against um, Chamberlain um, because he's been in charge this entire time of all this crap happening. We're in a freaking sweep through the lowlands very fast and into France um, with the German invasion. Now, give credit to the French soldiers. They held on pretty damn well. The Netherlands gave up basically when it is the only time, I will say this, it is the only time terror bombing actually worked. When the Germans bombed the ever-living crap out of Rotterdam, they said, we're going to bomb Amsterdam next. And they threatened the Netherlands to do that. And the Netherlands surrendered. But there you go. The one time terror bombing actually works. Um, and Belgium is going to get absolutely decked on because they don't have an alliance or a pre plan. They don't have anything. They weren't in the war at all until Germany decides to invade them, which is on King Leopold's head, um, King of Belgium, for that. Fighting Brahms. There you go. Dutch army surrenders, and then you got Erwin Rommel down here with the ghost divisions and all, and then cuts off everyone at Dunkirk. And you're going to see it's, it's basically over from here. We shall fight on the seas and oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. Yeah, and it, <laughs> Italy comes in basically at the very end to, to take some little territory so they can say they did something, and that's it. Um, Paris falls, that's it. It's, it's over for France. Latvia, uh, so Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia, so Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia are annexed by the Soviet Union. We basically just walk in there and say, hey, we're protecting you. Also, get on this train, because you're all going to get shot or sent to the gulags. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. The Gulf forms the free French government in exile. France officially surrenders to Germany. So this is now Vichy France, okay? And the free French forces in exile, or FFIA, I think. Now, Free French Forces of the Interior is FFIA, but the Free French Forces in Exile will be really in Africa and also in the Pacific. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. There goes Bessie Arabia. That's one of the main reasons Romania is going to come into the war. Hungary is going to demand territory from Romania, which Germany and Hitler are going to moderate that. Hitler orders the plans of invasion of Britain, which will not happen. 
We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. And if, which I do not for a moment. to air superiority postponed in the invasion of Britain. Basically, they couldn't get air superiority battle of Britain. Um, debatable whether they could have actually done so if they didn't destroy the bomb well, the civilian population centers. What would have happened if they didn't do that? I will just state for a fact is that Britain's aircraft production and they would have taken a lot more damage if the Luftwaffe actually targeted air bases, radars, and their actual aircraft production facilities, but they didn't do that. For a moment, believe this island or a large part of it was subjugated and starving in our empire beyond the sea. Luftwaffe halts as air attacks on airfields and begins terror bombing London and Sensi. That is the turning point right there. Because um, Britain was barely hanging on by a thread when their airfields um, were being attacked and mercilessly. Then they changed to terror bombing. He's armed and guarded by the British fleet would carry on the struggle. Okay, so now the Italians are going to be pushing into um, Egypt. And the RAF's going to claim victory down here. So the Egypt theater is kind of really a secondary theater for well, Germany. Primary theater for Italy, more or less. And... Uh, British troops in Ethiopia and especially South Africa is going to be really their main front. Uh, Britain's going to be waging war for really a few years against Germany. Until it, and Italy, of course. In God's good time, the new world, with all its power and might, steps forth to the rescue and the liberation of the old. German invasion of Britain was put in until 41 at the earliest, yeah, uh-huh. And then as we've seen, the Axis, the Tripartite Pact, with Japan basically coming in here, uh, Axis. And you see Romania is starting to align itself with Germany because of they lost Best Arabia here. <laughs> Having stalled advance in Egypt, Mussolini decides to invade Greece instead. Hitler is angered by this decision because he's stupid. So the generals of the Italians are not very good, first of all. Second of all, they even realized, hey, we need to prepare for an invasion. And it's invading. Gave them like a week to do this and decimated was not the word to use. The Italians absolutely got butchered by the Greeks. No planning, basically. Fly by the uh, seat of your pants. Yeah, the counterattack. Look, look, they're pushing him into Albania. There's also British and some French troops also in Greece fighting at this point. Because look, they're just... Francisco, uh, Francisco, Francis rules out Spain entry into the war, which is probably why he was still, you know, uh, left alone, let's put it that way, after World War II. Now, there are Spanish volunteers that will serve, especially in the SS, as the name serves likely, and there are some Spanish volunteers that will actually serve um, Germany in the war. And they do pretty... Damn well, good service. Now you can see that 35,000 troops versus 60,000. Yeah, the, the, the Egypt campaign is not really the main focus at this point. It's going to be the Greek uh, campaign, which the Allies are winning, surprisingly enough. Len Lease is now introduced into, into the U.S. Congress. Okay, it's introduced. It doesn't mean it's passed. This is January 1941, okay? Uses offers to join the Axis. Hitler does not respond. Hitler was never going to accept that, and that was kind of a false kind of thing from Stalin. I don't know what he was Stalin about, um, to be honest with you, because, well, the USSR and uh, Axis were, or Germany specifically were going to go to war with each other. Uh, either way, 44 was what hit Stalin planned for, um, and Hitler needed to hit him before then. Um, and it was never a question that the Bolsheviks were going to die um, by Germany. There was no question Hitler was going to declare war on them. So, yeah, we're going to see. So the Italians basically down here, what happens is the British do a daring assault with some motorized divisions, and the Italians do not have any guy motorized. They have some motorized, but they don't have, basically have a lot of infantry. Motorized completely out of circle the Italians here, and 42,000 troops are in circle, and the British just keep on going. Okay, so Germany sends going to send the Africa Corps down here, basically, to help the Italians out again. Never in the field of human conflict. 
The Italian army suffers terribly in Africa. 133,000 captured, 15,000 killed or wounded. The capture ratio is insane for 34,000 troops. Think about that. So much owed by so many to so few. All our hearts go out to the fighter pilots. Those brilliant... Uh, so the U-boat campaign is going on. Of course, Bulgaria decides to get involved, and this is going to really start ending in doubt. Well, I'm not saying yet, because Yugoslavia still has to go first. Actions we see with our own eyes day after day. I hope, indeed I pray, that we shall not be found unworthy. Yugoslavia joins the Axis. Fascist government removed. Uh huh. Hitler orders military leaders to plan the invasion of Yugoslavia. Worthy of our victory, if after toil and tribulation it is. And look at how fast that is. A pro Axis government in Iraq is installed. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Iraq is going to come in and get absolutely decked in a minute. And then you're going to see at this point, it's, Yugoslav gets taken out in like on two weeks. It's ridiculously fast how far, how fast they fall. But they will fight a massive partisan war against the occupying force, basically Germany and uh, maybe some Italians there. Um, but this is going to spell the end of Greece. Granted to us. For the rest, we have to gain the victory. That is our job. The Prime Minister commits suicide, the British evacuate, and Greece is over. And so you can see how long the Greece campaign actually lasted. It lasted for a good long time. It wasn't just like a very quick thing. It, they held out for a long time. And you're going to see Iraq is absolutely decked by the British and French. Uh, don't even know why they attempted to go join in. The Bismarck is sunk by the Royal Navy, and Barbarossa is about to go off. Breach the French-controlled Syria and Lebanon invade the, are invaded by the Allies to recontrol. This is the one time, actually, a French Foreign Legion fight French Foreign Legion. Vichy French, for, French Foreign Legion versus Free France French Foreign Legion actually fight um, in Syria, if I remember correctly. Um, the one time the Legion has fought against itself. We're going to go to Barbarossa now. I want you to take a look at how far and fast they hit them. Germany, Finland, and Romania invade the, invade the Soviets. I don't know when they didn't say Hungary. Hungary will eventually come in here. We have uh, Slovakia. At this point, the Czech Republic puppet does it down here. The front, uh, and I'm going to say Polish puppet, but the uh, government in the east. And then you have Finland, which a lot of people don't know. This is called the Continuation War, in which Finland pissed off that his territory is gone, is going to attack the Soviets. Now, those big what-if moments is, what if Finland didn't just stop outside Leningrad and have out these territories and actually helped push, which is what the Germans wanted them to do? They probably, 60-70% of, might have been able to actually take Leningrad if the Finlands actually pushed. But really, all they did was push and stop. They regained their territory and then stopped, thinking the Soviets would give them a peace deal. Fun fact! Stalin wasn't going to do that. At least 500,000 troops have been encircled already. There goes 750,000 troops encircled. Another, <laughs> another million troops have probably been encircled by now. A million, million, too. Right. We're looking, looking at the Soviets. They do not, uh, the Finns and the Germans completely outnumber and decimate the Red Army at this point. Completely. They won't really stop until. Damn near we were all Moscow. Okay, so we're talking about Iran. All right, so let's let's back this up a little bit. So, okay, yeah, it's all muddled. Very briefly, Iran, they need to secure the oil. So the, the Soviets and the French British are going to take out Iran to secure the oil supply so that Germans... And the Axis basically can't get it. Meanwhile, the uh, meanwhile the Soviets are getting completely collapsed on their entire front. Yeah, to save the Abaddon oil fields, as it were. Kiev is completely surrounded. The two million troops encircled and gone. All right, Kiev completely surrounded. 
Now you can see why I said here that if the Finns actually helped and pushed and did their job in Leningrad and linked up this corridor right here, which they very well could have done with their forces because there's basically no one out here, um, and cut this corridor off, Leningrad might, 60-70% of might have fallen, which would have been, and I don't want to say it wanted to turn the war or anything, but that would have been a thing. And Moscow's right here, guys. Um, Sevastopol will be sieged, um, and we're going to keep getting pushed. So you can see why in 1941 i do not know why people say this people were like oh at the time it was assured that the u.s and the allies would win if you look at them right now it's not like they're winning very much and it's not like they thought they would win at this point okay absolutely nobody thought that oh yeah we'll win eventually because the u.s wasn't even in the war the u.s isn't even in the damn war yet so it, it i will just say it didn't look like the soviets were going to win in 41 but in a long protracted war they would have eventually won Again, the German Blitzkrieg is about to run out of steam. <laughs> Operation Typhoon. And it gets <laughs> three, four million, four million, oh, five million apartment approximately have been circled by now. <laughs> Moscow's distance between the city, however, Stalin, Stalin stays and demands a stubborn defense. Because again, uh, it's kind of one of those what if, because uh, they never actually got got to Moscow. They got to the outskirts of Moscow. Now, it's very determined because Stalin said he was going to stay there. Well, they actually would have stayed there is a different matter entirely if the, the Germans actually got to the city. It's one of those what ifs if they, uh, if they did or not. Red Army reinforcements arrive in the Moscow sector. Joseph Stalin states that 4.5 million Germans have died in Russia a and, a and a great exaggeration. He is very yeah no um it's not looking very good for the soviets right now <laughs> yep and then now the winter is going to set in and you will see that this key city in crimea sevastopol is not going to fall will be sieged i might fall actually i'm not sure but it holds out leningrad for 100 percent fact holds out and actually one of the things is during the winter they're able to start getting supplies to leningrad um because Fun fact, this lake freezes, and you can just drive over the lake and get supplies into Leningrad. Okay, December 7, 1941. All right, so Japan attacks Pearl Harbor, thus bringing the U.S. into the global conflict. Yes, now it's going to take a while for us to get over here, obviously, but we'll get here eventually. Now we're going to start seeing the Soviets... Uh, push back because they start to recall their Siberian guys. The reason they do this is because Japan signs a treaty with them that says, hey, we have a non-aggression pact with the Soviets. The Soviets are like, cool, bro. Bring all their guys over here as much as they can to help defend. Another what if? What if Japan attacked them in Siberia? What have tied down troops there? Again, there's a lot of what ifs here. Yesterday... Rommel retreats in North Africa. We haven't even been paying attention to North Africa, but it's been basically a big back and forth. And very over simply is Rommel gets very close, but no cigar um, to Egypt. And basically his supplies are straddled um, from the sub raids um, from Malta. And also the fact that his supply base is really here in Tripoli. Um, and it, it, it it's just too far for his supplies. So he basically runs out. He can't. Also, the fact that he's not a logistician and hated the fact that he had to do any of that work. December 7th, 19th. Hitler takes supreme control of the German military matters. Basically, he is now in charge of, he is put himself in charge of absolutely everything military. Because at this point, it was still somewhat up in the air of who was in charge. Well, Hitler was the chancellor, so technically a supreme commander. But again, a state within a state, the Prussian aristocracy, um, and the chief of staff whether or not he would listen to him, but, you know. I mean, he had Keitel at his side, so, you know. But, basically, the reason he does this is because of the debacle that they don't actually take, because the generals wanted to take Moscow, and he wanted to push to Baku oil fields. Two very different objectives. Um, and the generals didn't accomplish their objective. 41. A date which will live. Army Group Center continues to retreat, and multiple units are routed. It continues to happen. In infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked. You can see these pockets that form and reform, and it's just a bloody battle out here in the East in 42. 
by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. U.S. and USA are checked by vast Japanese expansion in Asia. We're not even going to look over there because the British and the Americans are getting absolutely decked on by the Japanese Navy. It's hilarious. I won't say it's hilarious. It is um, surprising how good the Japanese Navy was to absolutely destroy the British Navy and kill a lot of American ships in the early part of the war. Disaster battle Raza cost the Red Army more than a million casualties. Manpower is a funny number for them. Stalin believes the German attack ahead of Moscow leaves the southern flank undermanned because, okay, again, the reason he states that is German, Hitler, Baku, oil, needs oil to win war. Otherwise, it, we, 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 run, we already ran out of oil at this point. But besides the fact that we've already ran out of oil, we need to actually get the oil or we can't continue this war at all. Um, and Stalin rightly suspected that, hey, they're probably going to go for another knockout blow in Moscow like they did last time. So he's going to move his forces there, leaving the south undefended, which is why we get to the Battle of Stalingrad. Hitler demands Mussolini to send more troops to the Eastern Front. He kind of half does. There is a few Italian divisions, cavalry divisions, actually are pretty good in the East because, well, most of the Axis were actually cavalry. They weren't motorized, like propaganda would show you. Um, but they actually did pretty decent work, but there was not a lot of them. And the Eastern Front is... <laughs> Romania is kind of puttered out. They don't really like defending. Bulgaria has some troops out here. Hungary has some troops out here. But again, they're not. They're like secondhand troops. They're not wanting to fight this this far out from their homeland. And yeah. Soviets on Crimea are routed, and Sevastopol is still holding. Britain and USS USSR agree that no separate peace will be signed by Germany. Um, this is May 1942. So, you know, France said they would do the same and, you know, didn't honor it, but the Soviets will actually honor those. <laughs> Allies begin the aerial bombing, which accomplishes something. Now we're going round two in Egypt, uh, Africa Corps time uh, against Egypt. All right, here we go. The summer's offensive. Stalin allows the Red Army to retreat and avoid large encirclements. Okay. Uh, basically, in the early part of the war, he issued Order 223. No, no, not one step back. Because if you look, this is the Ukraine breadbasket. There's a lot of major industrial centers out here. They had all this territory and it's all gone. Okay. They can't afford to keep losing stuff like this. But. Having lost of billions, like six some freaking million people by now, um, he allows commanders to actually, you know, use their brain cells and evacuate pockets um, and give up ground, basically. <laughs> the Battle of El Alamein is going to go on. 190. <laughs> uh, Sixth Army rushes to Stalingrad and the Volga to cut off supplies from the uh, Soviet caucus supplies, basically. That's why Stalingrad was so important. It's because it was a vital rail hub and supply point that you could actually supply the Caucasus from. <laughs> Stalin, there it is. Directive 221. Not one step back. We cannot uh, continue this war if we keep losing all of our major industrial centers and uh, food. And he is right here. <laughs> oh, Rommel's standing still right now. German forces are shifting to the city. Um, Stalingrad. Right here, if I remember correctly, right on this right where my cursor is, I believe. Um, because it's not down here, it's only down here. And again, you can see this entire time, you can see the Finns have kind of just been sitting here. We'll come back to bite them in the ass later, but you know. Whatever the hell is being said there. Okay. <clears throat> Taking a look at this, you can see why Stalingrad was a key and pivotal point right here. Okay, this is as far as the Germans are going to get in the Caucasus region. Now, hypothetically, if they were able to take Stalingrad, what would have happened is the rail hub supplies would have been technically cut off. 
but there's a massive rail corridor down here in the Caucasus that is still being supplied, let alone out here in Turkmenistan. But you're not, there's nothing out here. There's desert out here. There's desert in camp. <laughs> nothing out here. So, uh, this is why this river up here and these rail hubs are vital, and this is why Stalingrad was very vital for the Soviets to hold and very crucial for the Germans to capture. Um, but just remember, the Soviets were actually still getting oil out through this corridor um, and were still able to get supplies into the Caucasus. So if Germany was going to do anything, they needed to cut this corridor off first, okay? But they still have the Dead Sea here. But they need to cut off the corridor first and then take Stalingrad or a major rail hub because they still are supplied. They're still getting stuff in and out. Blah, whatever's being said down there. Uh, Battle of Stalingrad is going on, and the USA and UK are going to be preparing for Operation Torch, which is US combat forces in Europe will land in Africa in 43. There it, oh, 42. Oh, look at that. Uh, so you will see Torch is happening now in 42. I guess I cut the date wrong. I don't know why they landed in November. But yeah, November 42, less hot in Africa, and Torch is going off to, and it's going to completely wrap up Africa real quick. Um, this is a very good training ground for the U.S. forces, um, for landing craft operations, for how the army's going to work, and they get their ass beat in Kasserine Pass, um, because 88 and anti-tank guns versus M M4 Shermans at this point, because we don't use these. Um, M4 Shermans uh, goes disastrously. Uh, and yeah, our army is very inexperienced at this point. Red Army's going to launch Operation Uranus to cut off Stalingrad, to cut the Germans off, and you can see Africa's basically almost wrapped up at this point. Sixth Army stands is encircled in 330,000 men. Now, it's debatable <laughs> whether they could have actually broken out. I don't know. It's one of those what-if scenarios. If the Sixth Army, it depends what day, depends who's commanding it, depends if it's possible. Might have been, might not have been possible for them to break out. Um, but they would have lost at least 100,000 guys trying to break out of this because, you know, December. Um, and they're kind of can't move because it's freezing outside. And if you go outside and leave the fire, you will die. Um, so that's a problem. Now, if they would have pulled back earlier, who knows? <music> Germans fail in breaking the Soviet line to... Soviet lines to Stalingrad. They attempt to launch a counterattack. Doesn't work. Can't get them out. <laughs> Ufov attempts to supply Sixth Army in Stalingrad over air, and you can see it's already January. So December they were encircled. December fifth is the first day. <laughs> Newly arrived Italian forces are overrun by Red Army. So the seven divisions that. <laughs> Mussolini sent, he already had two over there, so it's a total of nine. Oh, overrun when uh, this happened. A new conscription law in Germany. Men between the ages between 16 and 65 and women between 17 and 50 are open to mobilization. Now, this women is 17 and 50, not combat arms. Let's get that out of the way. What we're talking about here is nurses um, and basically factory workers for them at best whole thing you get into and how Germany viewed women and all that reproduction thing, uh, whatever. 16 and 65 for conscription. Uh, so, you know, a 65-year-old man is not going to do very well in combat, and a 16-year-old man, a 16-year-old boy, not even a man, is going to do not very well in combat either, but you need manpower at this point because, you know, 6 million versus one, not even 3. <laughs> the 6th Army surrenders. Romania recalls his remaining forces from the Eastern Front. Romania pulls back. Again, this is one of those things that's not talked about. The Allies were dysfunctional. We are like a dis dysfunctional family. But at least a dysfunctional family, except the Soviet side, really. Dysfunctional family kind of worked together. The Axis was not that at all. The Axis did whatever every single country wanted to do, basically. Kind of semi-answer to Germany, but really not really. Did kind of whatever they wanted. So they recall their forces. They don't work together. The Finns don't work with the Germans. So yeah. It's... Germany fights the Soviets almost entirely alone. Uh, fights the Soviets almost alone at this point. 
there are 300,000 troops that are about to get yeeted in Africa, too. So. And now total war has begun because, uh, well, everything is needed for the mobilization war effort because it is uh, 43 February by now. And we are, Husky is going to start being prepared to go into Italy. Manstein destroyed several Soviet corps and stabilized the Southern Front, which buys them time. After the winter campaign, yeah, so they're going to sit around for a little bit. Wow. <laughs> Getting to Kursk. Oh, okay, boys. So, German plan for Kursk. Um, all right, let's see. This is Kursk salient right here. The plan for them is to pincer both moves down here to encircle Kursk. The problem is, so we know this is going to happen because they have two brain cells. So they prepare the ever-living crap out of the Kursk salient, which is what this bulge is, okay? Um, or Kursk bulge, Kursk salient, whatever you want to call it. Um, they de prepare defense and anti-tank mines, trenches, everything, okay? Um, and the attack goes off, and it goes half well decently, for whatever that's worth, and then uh, doesn't, because they actually meet the Soviet resistance that's prepared and knows they're, knows they're coming. Get absolutely decimated. Um and they also wait way too long because Hitler wanted to use the Panthers. Actually, Hitler wanted to call the damn thing off. But his generals were like, no, sir. No, sir. If we attack them and cut them off, uh, we'll win. And Hitler was like, no, no, no. That's bad. And Hitler was right. Generals were wrong, as we're about to see. Hitler decides, to take, decides that Germany must take back the initiative and regain trust among its allies. Because Mussolini, by this point, is... <laughs> 250,000 captured. Boom. That's it. Uh, yeah. Africa at this point. I don't even know why they bothered to say that long for Africa. I guess it was to tie down forces so they wouldn't invade Italy. Allied forces began preparation, planning for invasion of Italy. So Operation Husky is now going to be able to because Africa is secure. Operation Citadel, Germany attacks Soviet Kursk alien, is ready for an early summer, and is about to go down. However, Hitler demands postponement to allow new tank designs to arrive, as I said. Um, because he was like, I don't really want to do this. So it's weird, German plan to play a tight repair defenses. Ally bombing of German cities and industry increases to intensify. Whether it does anything? Eh. Sicily is bombed in preparation, so they're preparing to invade Sicily now. Operation Citadel commences, and both sides suffer heavy casualties. The largest tank battle takes place at Kursk. Uh, Germans, oh, really, it's kind of one of the last hurrah moments. As you can see, they actually do make some progress into the salient, but it's not enough. They run out of air support, they run out of fuel, they run out of tanks, they run out of everything. Uh, they, we have landed in Sicily, and we're going to whoop! And Mussolini is going to be ousted by the Italians, uh, the Italian government, basically, and whoop! And they're going to surrender uh, very soon. Hitler calls off Operation Citadel and sends troops to Italy. The operation has been a failure, obviously. Launch their counteroffensive and they're gonna push them far back. There we go. Mussolini is arrested and deposes as a dictator in Italy. And that happens all because they landed in Sicily at this point. The Italians are done with his war. Sweden, having so far benefited from German trade, stops all exports to the Reich in 43 August. They have been training a lot of iron ore and a lot of materials to Germany. That's one of the reasons they don't want to invade Sweden is because it was actually neutral and they could do this with Germany. <laughs> Axis forces evacuate Sicily. <laughs> tides of war have heavily shifted in the favor of the Allies. Now, if you say, in August of 43, almost uh, November, uh, or sorry, almost September, uh, I should really remember my own birthday, um, you could say that the war looked like the Allies were going to win now. And I would tend to agree with you. The people at the time were like, okay, now we'll probably win the war at some point. 
Italy seeks a peace with the Allies. German troops prepare to occupy the country. Whole debacle here that happens. Basically, the government, Italian government is inept, fails, and doesn't actually do what the Allies say, which is you need to switch sides like right now. And there's a whole bunch of peace bullshit that happens. Anyway, Germany is basically able to get there, disarm the entire Italian army, and a lot more people have to die because of it. There we go. And Italy surrenders, and Germany occupies the country. Mussolini is rescued by Germany's secret operation, reinstalled as a dictator in northern Italy, and becomes the Republic of Salerno. Um, and then you have the Kingdom of Italy down here, so yeah. However, the Mussolini will be of little use as he has lost his previous vigor and authority. He, was, he really didn't even want. <laughs> After he was deposed again and rescued and then put back on the, the Republican side, he was like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And Hitler makes him do it. The UK economy has fully mobilized as two, 227, 22, 750,000 British men and women are working for the war effort. Uh, that's not troops mobilized, that's just the British population actually working. So yeah, you can see that it took them 1939 to 43, that's almost, that's almost damn near four years to get to full mobilization uh, for the war economy side. And then they're going to start demobilizing soon because in late 44, 45, it becomes very evident that this war is over. Sebastopol did fall. Well, there you go. Sebastopol did eventually fall. Anti-German resistance nearly increased. Okay, so as Leningrad still hasn't fallen, obviously. Now, at this point, um, you can see that the numbers disparity on the Eastern Front is pretty bad, and also in um, the theater for Italy. Now, Stalin, at this point, wants another front open because, like, you know, Husky happened because he was screaming at the Allies in 41-42. Fun fact, if you play Hoy and the Soviets get invaded, they will scream at the Allies to do the exact same thing to relieve pressure off of them. Um, but they want to open, because this is kind of a side front, okay? And Stalin knows it, and the Allies know it, but they, they're like, no, 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 it's not a side front. No, 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 please. Uh, don't actually look. It's not, you know. So Normandy is starting to getting to be prepared now. Uh, Churchill actually wanted to land in Yugoslavia and liberate this area down here because he realized these people are not your friends. The Americans at this point are like, these people are our friends. La, 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 la. They will never betray us. We'll see who's right there. Um, it's kind of a, one, this is one of those what ifs. What if instead of Normandy, we landed in Yugoslavia? <laughs> in reality, probably would have what happened is maybe we... Joseph Tito, though, was doing his thing down in Yugoslavia, so that's probably communist. Um, the rest of these countries, it's up in the air, uh, but the, what definitely would have happened is it would have got, the Soviet army would have got a lot further, maybe even to Denmark, uh, if Normandy didn't happen. The main victims of the Allied bombing campaign seem to be civilians as German industry keeps up production. Very good. Strategic bombing, not very effective. Controversially, not really, but it was it really didn't do anything. It's, I mean, it definitely did something. They had to relocate their factories, but they're actually... The, <laughs> Germany's production kept going up year over year, even though the bombing intensified. So, again, fun fact, if you Hoi 4 players are like, oh, ho, 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 why I'll strategically bomb the crap out of them. No, no, no. All you're really doing is kind of pissing them off and slightly reducing their economy rather than actually getting troops in there. So. All right, Allied planners believe that Normandy, only lightly defended by the Germans, would make an optimal target for the landing. So this is December of 43. It's going to take till June 6, 1944 for us to land. So there's a lot of preparation that has to go into this. Large Soviet salient west of Kiev has split army groups south from the remaining fronts, which is army groups south down here. It's just it's just a steamroller almost at this point. <laughs> Russian troops push <laughs> Germans away from Leningrad, hoping the 873-day long siege. 
There are 365 days in a year. That is almost a two damn year siege uh, for the people of Leningrad. That had a result of cannibalism and a whole bunch of crap that Stalin didn't allow the civilians to evacuate because he was like, oh, yeah, the soldiers will fight harder. I'm like, no, dumbass. The soldiers will fight as hard as they can if you evacuate the civilians behind them because they're like, well, the civilians are over there and we run from here. Guess who happens to the civilians over there? <laughs> Stupid. A lot of people died in Leningrad. That did not have to die because Stalin was a monster. Well, I know I'm seeing the obvious here, but. Operation Overlord is confirmed from 44, February. I finished up the last time I have Moscow to negotiate peace terms, which is like, hey, can we please get out of this war? Stalin's like, nah. That's basically what he says is nah, and it will take until. 45 for him to be like, okay, actually, we'll agree to your peace term, which is we get everything back and you become neutral and we get your ports. Um, and the reason Stalin eventually agrees to that is because, well, I can actually end the war with Finland and move all my troops to Germany, more or less. Demands all newly formed units be sent west. Uh, and he anticipated the invasion of France gonna happen he thought it would be um near dover it wasn't it was near uh normandy which is further and they thought it would be uh not near dover god calais Cal <laughs> my brain it would be near calais um because it's the shortest distance dover to calais right here um but they didn't expect normandy because it's further away and the allies kept saying hey it is going to be it's going to be calais 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 <coughs> so yeah one of the things and hitler will have some of his divisions the problem is hitler has divisions and he, they're not allowed to be moved and they're sitting in paris and other sectors to avoid being bombed fair enough but he has to be woken up and told to move these divisions and he's and they tell him like a day later after the allies have landed so far too late i mean for example if the germans were actually able to do their the generals wanted or rommel general rommel wasn't even there in d-day either he was also back in germany um but if they did, and they got panzers on the beaches and started shooting landing craft, would have done a significant lot of damage. Yeah, okay, so let's let's see here. All right. So Hitler, blah, 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 blah. Furthermore, Soviet offensives towards Romania, he shifts his troops from Army Group Center to the south. The reason he does this is because, one, oil. Number two, grain. Are from Romania. They're absolutely vital to keep this war going at all, at all at this point. Um, because well, Germany basically has no oil at this point, so anything they can get out of Romania is still being used to help defend the rest of the line. Stalin proposes harsh demands to the Finnish delegation, they refuse his terms. So I guess I was wrong, but really, he was like full annexation, and they're like, no, please, anything but that. So, they will continue to fight for a bit. German production almost sees new heights. Exactly. Strategic bombing, not very effective. Okay. There are a lot of reasons for that, but basically, uh, very simply, <coughs> let's use the Americans. The Americans' bombers had bomb sites. Northern bomb sites, they're pretty damn good. For the single bomber that will actually bomb the target. The problem is when you fly into formation, guess what? The one bomber actually uses the bomb site. Everyone else just bombs around them. So the one bomber that actually uses the bomb site has like a 50-50 when they actually hit the target, which is pretty good considering the 1% accuracy that uh, CG bombers actually had. So again, saturating an entire area rather than bombing specific industries. Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force. More than 130 Allied political leaders and military officers meet for briefings for D-Day of the coming month. And they're going to shut down, basically, the south of England. Any troops, nothing, no communications are going to come out of here because they need to absolutely make sure this is a surprise landing. Otherwise, it's going to end in dismal failure. You are about to embark upon the Great Crusade. The Battle of Monte Cassino ends in an Allied victory. Germany retreats in Italy. A fun fact, if you guys watch Band of Brothers, uh, Bill Garnier's brother died at Monte Cassino, which is right here, right, right before D-Day, which makes sense. Toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. 
look, you're going to see D-Day happen. So now we're at June uh, 10th, and we're going to see the breakout. Uh, Allies enjoy complete air superiority. This has already been happening a long time. But yeah, there is German aircraft exists. Let's put it this way. If you were in an Allied division and your job was to be an anti-aircraft gunner, you basically didn't shoot at aircraft pretty much the entire war. Maybe in Africa you did, but in Germany, no. They actually... They didn't have a use for the anti-aircraft guns because, well, the German Air Force was destroyed at this point. So they used them for, you know, other targets, you know, soft targets, infantry bunkers, all that other crap. Uh, it's just one of those fun facts. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere. Germany scrambles to improv defense, and then the Normandy breakout will happen soon. March with you. And this little port up here is actually vital that the Allies capture. The Germans actually do delay them significantly and blow up this infrastructure here, but not damaging significantly enough. Because this pipe, these are pipes up here. Then these, this is an actual port facility up here. Because remember, Normandy is just a beach. These are facilities up here that let the Allies connect fuel hoses up here and actually pump massive amounts of fuel into France and supplies. And they need the port. In company with our brave Allies. And Operation Migration is about to begin. Uh, Army Group Center is taking off balance, and here we go. And brothers in arms on other fronts, you will bring about the. So he advanced completely destroys Army Group Center, leaving the Eastern Front wide open. It, Obliterated. Destruction of the German war machine. The elimination. As more Allied troops fled into Normandy, the balance heavily shifts against the Germans. Really? One million four hundred forty-five thousand, and the breakout's going to happen, and then France is going to be liberated in about a month. Of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of. The July twentieth plot is carried out by Colonel von Stauffenberg. Fails to assassinate Hitler at this point. If you watch Valkyrie, you understand what happened there. Um, and Germany, and basically Hitler. Complete control of the military now. And every department after the July uh, 20th plot, everything is now goes through Hitler. Europe and security for ourselves in a free world. No, no, not the above plot. Used to, this is the plot to, uh, as an excuse to wipe out anti war and opposition sentiment. Now let's break out of Normandy and they're going to take Brittany first. Why Brittany? Well, very simply, there's a lot of port facilities here, and the British bomb actually blew one of these port facilities up that could actually repair uh, the Bismarck interprets. And it's a very big port facility. Earlier in the Warner Commander raid, and their ship, uh, USS, it was a Clemson-class destroyer that they sent to the British, and they ran it into the gate dock, and, you know, it was out of commission for the war, but they'll they slowly rebuild up this area. There's other ports and stuff, so they can get more supplies in here, which is a needed. Northern Army Group scrambles to escape from the Baltics, but it is, but before it is completely cut off. I don't know about that. So, they were told to not evacuate, some of them. Um, because this front will hold out basically until the end of the war. There's actually going to be a Northern Army front until the end of the war. They could have evacuated those 270-something thousand troops to help fight in, in Germany's defense, which would have been a smart idea. Could have also evacuated Norway, which would have been a smart idea <laughs> for troops to help defend Germany, but, you know. Yeah, so the Allies break the German front line. It completely collapsed, and then they push into the front, and then you have the other invasion of France. Um, let me look this up. So it was Operation Dragoon. I always keep forgetting this, but most people forget it including myself. Operation Dragoon, which is landing in the south of France to link up with the north and divide German attention. Again, is France is going to be liberated very quickly. <laughs> Romania capitulates at this point and actually switches sides. Now Paris is liberated and whoop! Hitler demands all French harbors to be held at any cost as not enemy logistical hubs into Europe. Um, and if you can see why that would be a bad idea, you can see that the entire, this corridor right here is the only way out for any forces. And if you tell them to hold, <laughs> it's kind of like one of those, why would you hold? If there's literally one way out. If you try to hold, you're dead. Anyway. Bulgaria capitulates, swap side. Uprising in Yugoslavia happens with the communists and Joseph Tito. France is completely liberated by this point now in September. And we'll begin pushing into the lowlands and actual Germany soon. <laughs> Finns assign a peace treaty with Moscow at the cost of more territorial losses in September 44. Basically what happens here is, as I stated, Stalin's like, okay, fine. I won't annex your entire country. 
just give us all of your crap. You will be neutral permanently, and we have occupation of your little ports and do that as after you. And the Fens agree to this because they are completely exhausted and they know they cannot win. And also in the condition of the term is Finland immediately will declare war on Germany and all German troops in Finland must be taken into custody by force if necessary. And this happens. Uh, it's called the Lapland War um, that will actually happen out here. Germany initiates an orderly retreat from Greece to deploy forces elsewhere, which is a smart idea. Folks, from order, Hitler orders all remaining males 16 to 60 to immediately enter military service. Whatever. And because, I mean, conscription has already been 16 to 65, so whatever this is going to do. <laughs> Sylvia is drive on Budapest, uh, Hungary, Germany's last ally in this war, which will be soon knocked out. <laughs> Battle of the Hurtgen Forest sees both ally and German taking heavy losses for little gain. You have almost 2.5 million Allied troops here versus 700,000, and 2.2 versus 7 million on this side. Another 400,000 down in the Italian front. <laughs> Hitler demands planning of a new offensive against the Western Allies. At this point, he's basically insane. <laughs> Hitler leaves his war HQ in East Prussia for Berlin. He will never return. Imagine. Uh, East Prussia is dead here. Uh, is East Prussia. You can see this little line out here. This is East Prussia, which will become part of Poland at this point in Russia. This is actually called Kaliningrad now. Um, and then, as you can see, this northern pocket will actually hold out for, I think, until 45, until Hitler actually dies and surrenders. Um, when Germany surrenders, it will hold out in this pocket up here. <laughs> Antwerp is now a major supply port for the Allies going forward. They had, there's a whole, I think there's a movie about this, um, but Antwerp was actually very vital for them to secure because it was a massive port that could be used right here um, on in the Antwerp for supplies because otherwise the Allies had to keep using um, ports in because <coughs> Allies had to keep using ports in uh, Brittany and uh, Calais and Normandy and there's actually some German pockets out here which is surprising to me actually. <laughs> Germany's attacking the Ardennes, thus starting the Battle of the Bulge, and you'll see a move of lines move a little bit. And 101st is cut off. The Allies begin fully, uh, begin fully motorized quick. The Allied forces begin fully motorized, quickly respond to the threat. Okay, so basically their armored divisions and motorized divisions respond. So Budapest is surrounded, and a long serpent siege begins. A lot of these guys try to break out, um, and the ones that do get out, and the ones that don't. <laughs> Allies counterattack the Ardennes. Okay. So let me just say something about this. As a last tactical reserve, if I was Supreme German Commander for a day or something, is not go for the Ardennes. It would be to do something here. Probably, if it's my last operational reserve, break out this Northern Army group and get them out. Um, and help them for defending Germany. Or something else against the Allies, because there is no way this is ever going to work. Probably rescuing these guys up here would have probably been your best bet, but I don't know how far behind their lines you could have even gone. I don't know the disposition out here. Or keep it in reserve, basically, for the battle that will be coming up for Berlin, and actually use your last house to go reserve there. And let's just hypothetically keep going. If I was in command, pull guys out of Norway and Denmark. I'll leave the guys in Denmark, because you need to keep this back to Austria and just keep fighting out in the east and support guys from every other front because it's not fight as hard as you can in the east so that the west can be liberated there Red Army resumes its offensive in Poland and East Prussia Hitler now hiding in the Führerbunker in uh, Berlin with his companion Eva Brown Hitler orders cities to hold out as fortresses. No surrender or retreat allowed. The Red Army crosses the Oder River near Berlin, and this is Berlin right here, and they will completely encircle it. 130,000 troops encircle it. The Delta Conference of Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin begin, the subject of the post-war spheres. Basically, who the hell gets what? Um, and this end, and the, at the end of this. Battle of Budapest ends in Soviet victory, of course. 
German efforts shift towards protecting Berlin against the Soviet threat. Kind of. Not really, because they still have a lot of guys just out here that aren't being used for the Berlin sector. The Red Army attacks north and south to protect his flank. Basically, what they're doing is they're going... Because, again, they could have gone for Berlin and taken it out, but they want to secure their flanks, which is the smart option uh, to do. And then they want to circle Berlin and, uh, and the wall. <laughs> Allies enter German territory. We've already been in there, but... And then we're going to take the Ruhr Valley, which is up here, right here. Um, and it's economically the heartland of Germany. Everything comes out of this, and once it's taken, it supplies stop. Industrial production and all. Now you're going to see us completely blitzing the map. Yeah, effective resistance in the West breaks down at this point. Um, in April 7, 1945. It's just, at that point, it's gone. Soviets capture Vienna. Red Army finalizes plans to, to develop and assault Berlin. Hitler promises a new Stalingrad, or whatever that was worth. Can see how the allies and the red army were in theory going to meet up for berlin but not really it was discussed that berlin would be soviet however allied air power may mistake the soviets for the germans so what the soviets did was they painted um if you look on an is tank they have these white marks for them and those are denoting for the battle of berlin like this white uh stripe around the turret um and i believe on the back of the hull i think um, it was basically to out to mark out, hey, we are using this symbol um, as, you know, a don't shoot us allied planes, please. I'll find a picture. I'll put it there. I'll put it up. <laughs> Mussolini's mistress are killed. Well, that was fast. Yeah, they, they get yeeted by the Italian. <laughs> Berlin is surrounded by the Red Army and basically wars are. <laughs> Hitler commits suicide in the bunker and we'll just wrap this up. And that is it. So, I um, hope you guys liked that video. Again, I leave the original video in the description. <laughs> Probably should have watched that uh, if you didn't want me to take, I don't know how long this video is. So, hope you guys liked that. Like, comment, subscribe, uh, the Patreon and stuff. Otherwise, I will see you people next time. Catch you next time.